to see you <laughs> good to see you how you doing man good good uh what's that orb that spherical object that it looks like a a, a real nice little kind of oh, modern right. chandelier life <clears throat> yeah it's a life fixture my wife hated it was in the living room so i didn't want to throw it away so i just put it in my studio good idea it looked weird in the living room it's cool but it's like medieval or something it didn't sure, make yeah, sense I out could, there yeah looks like it could definitely be part of maybe something like a uh um what, uh, what i always get these confused like the bands the bands that took on medieval torture device right. names <laughs> or is it there right. a sub subcategory of that 100%. what's a steely dan for instance oh that was uh a torture device, wasn't it? Was it was it a torture device or something? something? I feel like it. It sounds like it. Oh, the Iron Maiden. I think so too. Of course, the Iron like Maiden. Iron was Maiden. The, that's, that's the, yeah. That was like that's, the sarcophagus with the spikes that closed. I think. Right. Which which good, freaked actually, me out when like the acid clean Did, when you saw Tommy the first time. How young were you, by the way? Uh, I don't Remember? know that I've actually seen um, the entire thing front to back. Oh. Oh wow! Yeah, I missed a few things. Oh, that's it's very, right. You know, it's very conservative oh, home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, because Tina Turner's character, when she's introduced, like she comes out of that similar type of thing. Only it's like her syringes are like she's because she's such an addict. You know, she plays like right, this, right, the acid queen. So this really freaked me out. It was very square. You know, sure. Very square as a young guy as yeah. opposed to now i like to the i like how <clears throat> there was that era that happened um like late 60s early 70s nixon did a lot of it which was like the <clears throat> the sort of vilification and criminalization of psychedelics even though they're they're fantastic and they're not really dangerous if they're it's so weird correctly. that you brought that up. Why did I you just, bring that I up? Just, I just had my first psilocybin trip recently. This is, hold on one second, Mike. This is meant to be. We were meant to talk today. I love this. What do you got? Yeah, Michael Pollan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hundred well, percent. Yeah, my just, girlfriend just got me this first first two episodes of the of Netflix, the Netflix show. series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my girlfriend Fantastic. got my girlfriend also. Well, I'm just going to come out. I am, you know, if people have a problem with it, then they have more homework to do themselves. But I, I sure. recently did also. Love it. And yeah, so I, um, so she got me this book. My girlfriend got me this book, and then. Um, I saw just she was she was stuck in Denmark for a while because she's Danish from you know national birth, but she she she's here she lives here, but she was stuck and uh, she was uh, for a long time. And then because uh, they the airline went on strike and everything, so finally right. she got a flight. And just as she was going before a flight, I saw that this was turned into a Netflix series. So I sent Michael Pollan. So I sent her the link to it so she could <laughs> and she watched the, the whole thing like on her flight back or something. Love it. But it's it's so, so weird good. that you brought that up. Yeah, <clears throat> well, it's pretty meaningful for me. I, a good buddy of mine, who is a uh, he's a doctor of philosophy. So what a what a worthless degree to get, but um, <laughs> monetarily, 
it's a beautiful degree. But well, you can only be a, you know. you can only be a, uh, an academic. But go ahead. Yeah, and guess what he is? He's a teacher. Go go imagine that. Huh? So right, right. So he's just killing it. Anyways, but <laughs> he's been doing research for years um, on psychedelics and okay. men- mental health, uh, trauma, and that's what kind of turned me around to it because I was, <clears throat> you know, I was raised to believe that all this stuff was wrong and that every substance was the same basically that like mushrooms and alcohol were the same thing kind of you know that idea and uh yeah he would just like send he would like text our little group like research articles and he started actually reading them like wow like they're actually working with um you know iraq war vets ptsd and all severe trauma right and it's amazing that's they're seeing so changes people. that took right so many people and the downside there isn't really one i mean there's a downside <laughs> Nobody's to a, everything well it's like marijuana is often they're called so it was you know so um it just you know we live in a country i was just talking to somebody else about this too such uh, i mean we're a pretty hypocritical country and uh you know yeah. um uh, to say the least but uh like you know marijuana which finally because it they finally were able to kind of rebrand marijuana because it was helping people with let's say cancer uh, yeah. regain their their you know it was it was becoming medicinal so therefore yeah. that changed the perception of marijuana and not surprisingly now we're seeing this uh trend of state after state legalizing it right yeah. so i think it's only a matter of time i mean as it is i think that uh, it's already there are things happening which show indicate mm-hmm. that, that that's probably oh, going to yeah. be the case right with Sal Simons and yeah it'll be it'll be a minute yeah right I mean just because it's those old you know the old PSAs from the 80s of like this is a this is your brain this is your brain on drugs you know <laughs> right just say no that's it's yeah just say no like it sinks in and and you and it was effective what <clears throat> the lobbyists and the politicians and the uh, religious folks, what they what they did was was very effective. But it's just a bummer um, because it's somebody who worked in mental health and who right is, you got your you know, degree, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and and who you know is a, a consumer of mental health still. So, um, like just the idea that people would <clears throat> like actively and intentionally destroy something that could be so helpful um that's pretty brutal because i'm thinking about even myself like early on like i i was diagnosed with ocd when i was 19 and like what if at 19 i could have you know been a part of a research study with microdosing or something and had some <clears throat> had some real healing wouldn't that have been cool right. you know yeah you didn't want to suffer for a, such an extended period of time needlessly right. turns needlessly. out needlessly yeah, well, I mean, like you can this. ask why do we have the why do we have mental illness and why do we have, you know, disorders in the first place, uh, addictions and all. I mean, that's a question. But then, those things are you can say if they're natural, um, then why aren't right. isn't something like a, a, a right. plant that heals that natural? Like what? Yeah, it's just a, it's a counterbalance. It's about. Um, I was yeah, going to say a couple of things. One is a. Um, yeah, everybody, the other thing about marijuana is that everybody in their family has, or everybody has somebody close to them that knows that that's had cancer or has is mm. struggling with cancer and they can see the marijuana helps. So that's what, right. what, what needs to happen here. Those who see that their relative who suffers from, you know, extreme case of PTSD or depression, uh, mm-hmm. a fucking, you know, like if a, why do people have to suffer for depression? Right. Right. Um, I, it's just, it's so my, I have a friend, his name, he's a filmmaker. His name is Michel Negroponte. And he made a documentary years ago, at least 10 years ago, maybe around 10 years ago called, uh, love is a danger. Love is a dangerous. I always get confused with that. The title, you know, lovers in a dangerous time, but oh, yeah. uh, it's, uh, dangerous with love. It's called. Mm-hmm. I'm dangerous with love. I'm dangerous okay. with love. What a great title. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about Ibogaine, which is another uh, 
uh, ibogaine is probably related to ayahuasca and that kind oh, of thing. Oh, yeah, it's, okay. It's a similar, uh, yeah. ca- it's like from what it looks like a cactus, I think, you know, that kind mm-hmm. of similar. It's found in South America. So people okay. were going to, they, they, they were treating heroin severe addicts oh, wow. with ibogaine and they couldn't do it in America because they, you know, <clears throat> the government wouldn't let the that through. And, you know, for so people could be treated here with it, but it helped people break their heroin addiction. I mean, my God. Which is like, but then, you know. then people won't go to prisons for Will, William, you know, uh, then that we won't populate right. our prisons enough and we won't, you know, people won't break the law and populate <clears throat> prisons. It's not conspiracy theory. This is just well established. <laughs> no, so. it just comes down to, it just comes down to money. That's all. It, it just comes down to money. And that, yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, I mean, for, you know, for Nixon, it was uh, it was just political power. He wanted to stay, right. stay right. in power. It's not. I mean, it was really evil. What what um, they did, you know, like connecting what uh, you know heroin and crack to to black people, and then right. oh the psychedelics to the hippies, and then you 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 know then you have your enemies, and they're easily identified, and then you can throw this issue at them that that we can all have a big moral panic Mm -hmm. over and i it's kind of genius the way he did it it was so evil yeah but like you gotta gotta respect it's like dr evil shit you know and then you can get elvis to be your spokesperson (laughs) yeah there (laughs) you you go or your yeah your your, your czar or whatever deputy or whatever he was uh um wasn't he uh um like atf agent or it was something like a narcotics You know, yeah. which was, yes. of course, the irony of that was right. so beautiful as well. Yeah, he was going to stop all those <clears throat> yeah. those dr- drug users, you know, and he's pumping his body full of painkillers. Yeah, yeah um, but anyway, but my experience was really, uh, it was it was awesome. And it was done in a very responsible way. And um, but it's a big part of it is like doing it with someone, right, that can um, lead you through it, correct? Yep, proper... Uh, the, the guy that I mentioned um, was the trip trip sitter. Yeah, guide. Yeah, and uh, like curated playlist. Oh yeah, music. That's super, like, I'm gonna put on you. Actually, I was thinking of that for my for we're you know because he's a big believer in the no lyrics thing. Oh, I no, I don't know. I again, I don't know what like I took. We were just did mushrooms, so maybe it's a different. It's a different. Yeah, I don't know because uh, I put on actually we were listening to one thing, and I finally just put on. Uh, leonard cohen but like oh really real latter day where it's like uh yeah, like, yeah. you know you want it dark you want it darker that song i don't know and, right, and right, right, right. i think it all depends <laughs> i mean there's so many different things no it's such a well that was that's his thing and that's right. th- that's not necessarily you know he's he's not a, by no means a shaman or anything like that but <clears throat> but it, it yeah it was interesting because there, there's definitely a roller coaster Mm-hmm. that i went on you know it was not all light but i would say that it was all meaningful if yes. that makes sense you know i don't know it's oh, yeah. one of those things it's funny because i mean i would i would never tell my mother in a thousand years that i did that um uh she'd be horrified and i wouldn't tell you know 20 year old me i did it either because he would be horrified um huh. but what a cool Part and part of it too, Adam was just being open to a new experience right. that you know the younger part of me thought was like bad or something. Right. That doesn't mean that I should go rob a train. Um, also, because that's not even a thing anymore. I don't think they have. Do they still have like big bags of <laughs> money <laughs> sitting in, in burlap? They have, yeah, burlap, yeah, burlap sacks. It has a yeah. I've got a couple of extra bandanas if you need them, but get some horses to the yeah so that's not going to work anyways without a time machine but <clears throat> yeah you don't want to do something just because like it's it, it's bad and it's exciting i just mean challenging you know my old beliefs and the person i used to be right i love that that's, yeah yeah i love that and as an artist by the way as a just an additional i don't know if it's a benefit but it is a benefit in a way because sure. what what you're doing is you're you're, the hope is right to explore and to grow and um, and ha- you know a big way of that is 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 knowing yourself and being the most authentic person you can be you know 
Fire. I was watching, as a matter of fact, speaking of documentaries, I know we've already brought up a couple, but this is film wax, so yeah, get I mean, with the program. I mean, yeah. Uh, the George Carlin documentary. Have you watched that one yet? Oh, I didn't see it yet. Try to see didn't it. See it yet. Is it good? Try. Yeah, it's really good because he, George Carlin was always on this journey. You know, we didn't know necessarily. We saw changes in his style and in his, even in the comedy, but it was all about this authentic, finding his authentic self. And it was such mm -hmm. a journey for him, you know, and he kept getting cl close. And then he just turned out to be a pretty angry, you know, <laughs> spewing this stuff, which was no longer comedy. Right. And maybe, right. you know, it's where, like, I mean, even I was like kind of at that point, you know, like, all right, well, this is just sort of, this, I don't see this as, as entertainment, whatever it is. Right. It's not that. Right. But, but, but it's beside the point, you know, it, it, he is just in a, it's, it, 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 any, any artist could so relate to what George Carlin was about and in, uh, right. in this documentary. So I, I, I recommend you see it. Okay, I will. Uh, that, that was one a good friend of mine is a big Carlin fan, and he told me uh, uh, probably longer ago than I care to admit that I should watch it. <clears throat> I was like, "Oh yeah, it's on the list." Well, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> he. I wonder, wonder where if he hit, instead of all the cocaine he did all those years, if he had done something like psilocybin, he might have been totally. better off. Not, I don't know. Maybe he did that too. <laughs> Just uh... yeah, that might, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, that might have been a part of it. Yeah, know. it's hard to know, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, the journey thing is, <clears throat> oh, the journey thing is funny. Yeah, it's it is it is important. It's a uh, <clears throat> there's no homeostasis in life. I mean, there is in our in our bodies, right? Like that's like that that's one of the systems that the principles that the human body operates on, right? Uh -huh. Is like the the regulation of temperature. <clears throat> right it knows roughly what temperature it wants to be 98.6 is the you know the gold standard they always say and so it'll do things like sweating or decreasing hunger uh or making us thirsty it'll do things to <clears throat> keep mm -hmm. everything homeostatic right keep everything in huh. balance uh satiation it'll make us full you know when we're finished eating <clears throat> um but in life that doesn't really it doesn't exist anywhere outside of like the biological imperative of a creature surviving so for me there is no if i become static it means that i'm actually going backwards hmm. i'm not actually staying in one in the same spot like not even artistically i just mean like as a human being if i wake up and i'm like you know i'm just going to coast for like a month and not not work on anything no exercise <clears throat> i'm just going to eat whatever's in front of me maybe i'll talk to my family my kids maybe i won't i don't know you know what i mean no intention out just like just coasting that's backwards movement inevitably mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> Rel relationships same thing it's like hey you know what honey i think we got we're doing pretty good let's take some time off <laughs> from the marriage let's take a year and just chill and just see what happens, you know? I'll tell you what happens. You know, the marriage is going to be in a lot of trouble. Best case scenario. Anyways, <clears throat> that's a long diatribe. But <clears throat> yes, it, you have to keep moving. Mm, and sometimes uh, that's terrifying. It's terrifying. So maybe there is, right. So maybe there really isn't any middle, like, uh, uh, limbo or, or, you know what I mean, where there's a period, you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. So there's no... There's no yeah. like middle space. I think so. Around. Didn't Bono Maybe. say that? To every Maybe. song, it's either about running towards God or running away from God. Uh huh. Something like that. Like, Same yeah, idea. there's no, there's no like, mm -hmm. you know, just sitting there kind of, yeah, yeah, you, you know, universe is okay. Things are all right. You know, it's just, it's, it, there's constant movement. I hate that. <clears throat> I hate that constant movement. I want to like, I thought, you know, I had like things figured out. 10 years ago or 15 years ago and it would have been nice to just stay there but i didn't have it figured out it just felt like i did right it was yeah. nicer though it's nicer when you're deceiving yourself <laughs> well that's what the, the matrix the matrix if i can constantly re make references to movies <coughs> what, while you're yeah, talking about that's... deeply personal things in your life and i'm going to keep making these well uh... no but no film and music are these are ways that we communicate and and can right, um, that's true Right. identify 
these things. It's like in that movie, right? And you're like, oh yeah, right. that's what I felt. Well, yeah, yeah well, it is is all what we're yeah. It's all what we're kind of talking about because it's yes, you're right. It is feel like uh, everybody. Look, everybody does need a break here and there. Life is is difficult. Life is challenging. Oh God! And it's sure. nice just to have. It's nice just to turn on Netflix for you know the night or the weekend or just or just blow off a weekend. But the oh, I mean yeah. the general. But it, that a weekend can become like you know a year and you know um, or. But whatever, that might even like, be forward movement, Adam. That taking that weekend off. <clears throat> that sure. might be growth that might be right the the rest the checkout that you need you know i right. think we yeah, all know we all know yeah when when we're like on the path or off the path you know what i mean so, like i i've yeah. never not known sorry go ahead yeah no no please i mean this is your this is you're the guest so i i, I hate interrupting um and by the way are you in you're in currently in illinois or are you yeah in, you are right. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Yep. Home in Illinois right now. Very good. Um, I, I anyway, I just wanted. Uh, I like to, you know, especially now that we do this stuff on Zoom like this. Um, it's nice to uh, to have a sense of geography or you know location. Right. For, you know, just to know where you are. <clears throat> um, and could have said middle of nowhere, and it would have been the same. <laughs> well, yeah, answer. you're not. You're you're at somewhere. What's the name? Of the, uh, you shouldn't say actually, uh, but you're 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 in, uh, not terribly far from Chicago. No, it's like four hours from Chicago. That's terribly far. Okay, that's fine. It's very. It's <laughs> literally middle of nowhere. It's just a corn. If you see Got a cornfield, well, you're, you're from close. Yeah. What's that? If you see a cornfield, you're you're close oh. to where I live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm near. I'm in the middle, kind of nowhere these days too. But but there's more. Lots of towns, and you know, there's this New York, still a New York City vibe up here. I moved north of the city. So oh, I'm like two, I'm yeah, I'm like two hours north of the city now in the Hudson Valley. So that would be two <laughs> miles, two miles north of Manhattan, right? That's a New York joke. I sorry, uh, I, I, I didn't spent a lot of time that, there right? recently. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Have you? It takes so damn long to get anywhere in that city. It does. Uh, yeah, my wife, um, my wife <clears throat> uh, is a New Yorker. Well, was okay. a New Yorker, and uh, yeah, lived in Manhattan for sixteen years. So. The last few years, I spent a lot of time um, in the city, and uh, it's not for everybody. No, I, I just got guy. really, I really got burnt out myself. So I re- mm-hmm. and and there were a lot of people said, "But you're a city, you're a city guy. You're not gonna, you're not a country mouse kind of thing." And I'm like, uh, I don't think you really, I don't think you really know. First of all, I re- always love just you know, and tr- and found any excuse to be, you know, whether it was upstate or outside the city yeah. or up in New England. And the other thing is I was burned out. So I needed to get out of the city. I needed yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and there I think you can change too. You're not always just, you know, you can be a city person for a decade and then not be anymore. Right. Right. Well, this was so many, this was so many decades that probably people just assume I have just associate you with New right. York city and, you know, right. how are you going to be, what do you mean you're going to go live upstate in like, <laughs> some small and now i'm working on a radio and, and so it's just worked out like so ideal i love that I'm, I'm working on an indie radio station which plays music just like you right so it's pretty awesome i love that it's really it's really awesome um, yeah and as actually at some point before we well we can do this over email but i i need you to say uh, one of the reasons were the main reason i guess that ca- the catalyst for us talking wasn't um psilocybin <laughs> stories although good one though. i'm really thought that was amazing but it's because you have a new album it's a your first cover album yeah well or albums you have actually co- uh, covers volume one and two i i didn't even realize because i only got they sent me uh the first volume i guess <clears throat> oh two is still two is like in the beginning in the work stages still yeah got it uh so but i want to get a, i do would love to get a copy because i'd love them to give it to the program oh, hell yeah director. absolutely yeah 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 i mean you should be sending everything to him anyway so going forward because i'm not sure i haven't yet i should i'll ask rick if he, if he's aware of your music i'm sure he's really just one of those guys that's been in radio forever um anyway i was going to say the last thing i was also going to bring up about the our our psilocybin conversation was that it really also it's better, they say, right? It's even in the book, I think, that for as you get older and middle age to older, because 
that's when it's kind of almost at a point where it's you're ready to rediscover or to yeah to you know what i mean like like yeah. you're it's you kind of get into a rut whether you know it or not often mm. anyway like how do you just could expand as a person i i mean so i i i'm always looking for that you know you're you're saying 15 years ago you were not ready 15 years ago oh even if i had done it yeah i don't know that it would have been effective it might have been cool but this wasn't just cool this was it, like i said but it was meaningful right you know yeah that that to me is the difference so yeah i think yeah the age i think the age thing is relevant i i, I don't know you start to or see maybe, the gray maybe hairs it maybe you know? it would have helped you 15 years ago i don't know because you said you it could have in another way you were saying you were kind of in some sort of really not you weren't at, at least right at that time you weren't able to uh see things for the way they really were um, right my self-deception was it was so high and my ego defenses were so strong right <clears throat> ego uh yeah i mean well like the yeah you know they talk about the default yeah. mode network <clears throat> the the dmn that's like okay. the main thing that they believe that psychedelics are affecting the default mode network is sort of your uh i'm gonna butcher this but it's kind of your self-identity right <clears throat> okay and a lot of times this is where they're finding the problems are actually are lying and and most of us don't have the conscious ability to go in there and change anything about that you know yes it gets it just gets written in stone and so psychedelics can they go in there and they literally just scramble it all up <clears throat> and you're given this beautiful opportunity to put it back together however you want to mm. you know um yeah because it, it feels terrifying. like er it is yeah it can be but it's also like usually the things that change people and maybe maybe or maybe it's only temporary but like you know when they have a life altering event like you know somebody close to them dies or you almost die in an accident or sure. You know, there's lots of these things, uh, but it, that that's when people some are able to, if they're, you know, they're, it's, it's a, those are opportunities also because it just will shake you up to the degree where, yeah. you know, nothing is the same anymore. And you will yeah. do, that's when people make, they tell you then don't make rash decisions. No, Maybe they, I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. This was my experiences with my dad. He, he died um during a heart operation oh dear. Yeah. <clears throat> uh while i was in college uh, on the tape excuse me i really should have prefaced that he's not dead he died for a couple minutes okay <laughs> um oh, on the table i, I need to really uh, develop how that. I start start that story <laughs> yeah that's yeah. that's a that's a really soft um intro <clears throat> and <laughs> it literally changed almost everything about him he's still the same person he didn't wake up and start talking in a funny voice or something or all of a sudden like but, not love you love his family <laughs> well but well that's but that's the thing we didn't have a relationship up to that oh. point <clears throat> oh. and this changed everything he called me from the, he was still in the hospital a couple days later and he called me like weeping <clears throat> uh just about you know how scary that was but how grateful it is to be alive and he wants to have a good relationship with me wow wow and he's you know this was uh 20 i don't know 25 years 24 years ago and he's one of my best friends you know so yeah those i don't know i just we need these powerful experiences yeah to wake us up sometimes i guess it's true the ego again it's the ego where as you're saying you they you build up so much it's so invested I, I don't know. It's so hard. It's unfortunate, you know, like, cause that it takes those types of experiences, uh, you know, to kind it of, it's unfortunate. You know, to, yeah, yeah. It's really, because he probably part of the reason he was weeping was, well, you know, it's probably there's regret in there that he didn't yeah. do something. Plus sooner. 20, 20 years. Yeah. 20 right. years of a relationship that could have been there, you know, Yeah. I would have been crying too, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you yeah. know, I, I mean, it's a good story overall, but yeah, there, I, I agree with you, Adam. It's a, 
um, yeah, there's a very strong lesson uh, in that as well. That being said, I don't believe in free will, so I'm not entirely sure he could have really chosen any different anyways. But, but um, you know, here's where we are, and, you know, you do the best you can. Um, oh, man, I, I just had something. Oh, I just had something I was going to mention. I totally slipped my It'll mind. come back. It always comes back when I talk to people. I'm telling you, it'll come back. Thank you. Um, okay, so but the first thing is first covers volume one. Yeah. When when is it coming out? What's the release date? Uh, it's November. Oh, it's that I far can, off. I can give I can give you a, a, a November no, first no, it's in... through the end of November. <laughs> that's the. <laughs> it's a window. It's I'll coming out in a window right now. I didn't realize it was so <clears> far <throat> off. Does it? Okay. Well, you tell yeah. me. I'm, what I, I can also, by the way, not that we've even touched on it yet, but um, well, I, you know what? It's cool about this. What we can do is I'm going to do a, uh, I love this stuff, getting to know you. And, um, and then I'm going to take the second part of our conversation. And, and please tell me when you are, is your heart out, as they call it, because I, I want to respect your time. But, Thank you. uh, yeah. but, uh, we can talk about the album and spe more specifics because uh, doing a cover album is, you know, is a very, in such an intentional thing. And also it, it opens you up personally as an artist, not even the way your songs do. Well, that's kind of silly in your case, but <laughs> to say that your songs right, right. are so much about your uh, heart and your personal life over the years, but, but it's a different way in it, which is, is, you know, kind of like a, Again, now I'm getting into it, but you're making choices about songs. It, it's a it's letting people into your personal life in a way that even writing those songs it doesn't. Do. I agree. I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah, I agree um, completely. You know, you, you're putting those choices, and and also you got to know like people are going to say, "Why would you choose that?" Song? Or I love, fucking love that's my song, man. That's my. I, you're going to get this whole spectrum. Whereas if you put it out an album, excuse me, of original material, nobody's heard it before. Right, right. I mean, you know, try to do something different. Maybe there's a problem there. Because if you right. try to do so, your something more, ed, you know, let's say driving or something bigger sound or different kind of, yeah, people will have a problem with that, of course. Some people. Sure. No, they do. Right. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, anyway. But I, I, I don't know. I One thing I wanted to mention was uh, before we get into the album, and that is um, your first two albums, for instance, you recorded out of your home at the time, obviously, yep. correct? Yep. They were not right. done in a studio. So nope. this, I wonder if this was your, your birth of the, your interest in, in gear. Like, cause I know, like I was rewatching your conversation. I didn't want to watch too much of it because it would get in the way of our conversation, but right. with Joe right. Arthur, Joseph Arthur, where, you know, which, and you were, Did talk about we're gear, talking about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We we're talking about microphones, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's funny. Uh, <clears throat> no, interestingly, I don't think it started then at all. In fact, I remember <clears throat> specifically just, I didn't have any money. Like that was my first marriage. Uh, I was working um, on my internship hours for grad school. So not, not getting paid. I was a therapist, but I wasn't getting any money for it. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> my wife, at the time, she'd finished nursing. So I think she had just started um, nursing. So she was making mm -hmm. okay money, but mm -hmm. we only had the one income, <clears throat> and she was just starting out. So there wasn't a lot of money to go around. Anyways, mm -hmm. oh, and she also wasn't too psyched about spending what little money we had on recording equipment when I I'm... See that. In finishing graduate no, school you, for a different, and you don't profession. even have a track record. So at that point, as a recording, <clears throat> well, it, was, artist. it was nothing. I mean, she thought right. I was, you know, good, but it was some, you know, like you got your little guitar there, you know, <laughs> you, it's cute. You play on it got Saturday. It got me, won me over. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. Well, exactly, right. But it wasn't a thing anyway. So I just went to the store, and I was like, I need the cheapest shit you have, like cheapest microphone. <clears throat> cheapest recording interface and i just used my i had an like an hp tower um that would freeze constantly because it was just not made for recording 
music. I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, no, the fascination with gear started later, but um, yeah, early on it was, it, I was probably all the better for it because I didn't care then. You know, I was like, who cares about the microphone? <clears throat> like, I just want the song to sound cool. I should have kept that. <laughs> it's the, obviously the gear matters a little bit, but you know. Well, maybe you you had a almost instinctual way it seems to how to sing into a mic though i mean it seems like that from because your yeah. style so intimate i don't know i think i figured i think i figured it out quickly i mean there were things i didn't know how to like i didn't know how to comp uh <clears throat> or edit at all so if i had a five minute song that had guitar in it i had to play perfect for five minutes if there was a you know, a car horn outside or a creak in the chair, I had to start over. And wow. I mean, dear God, it took a long time to record that shit. You know, now I know just how to, you know, how to punch, how to comp. Uh, you know, you played a few times. I know what punching then, is. I don't know what comping is. Comping is where, you know, I sing the song five times and then I select the best parts from each one. Okay. And just, you know, kind of paste it all, uh, paste it all together. <clears throat> um, anyways it, it's funny because when i learned that i was like damn it <laughs> it's like i wasted so much oh time God. yeah <laughs> like hundreds exactly. of that's hours. when you were crying <laughs> like your dad yeah yeah, was... yeah that's when i had my breakdown yeah that was <laughs> it yeah you mean i could have no but you knew you could do it but you just didn't know how to do it <clears throat> i didn't even know it was a thing oh wow that's amazing i didn't even know i had nobody to show me you know wow it was and i came from like the the thing where when you're a kid and my mom had a little tape recorder and we had like the you know the hi-fi system in the living room so i would tape myself playing guitar right and then put that tape in the stereo play that on the speakers put and another tape in the recorder and then play to that or sing along to that and that was multi-tracking multi multi-tracking right i didn't invent it turns out les paul did a long <laughs> time before that i thought i did but it was i'm not even kidding Adam, it was the coolest thing up to that point i'd ever experienced in my life <clears throat> it was better than all the christmases and birthdays combined it felt so magical wow. like i felt like a rock star that i it, i'm sure it didn't sound good even but it was like i just made something you know right yeah so that kind of hooked me really early on i don't know eight nine years old something like that but well this kind of does tie to the question i did remember you were absolutely right i do remember it uh which is you were brought up with tons of music at home right you grew oh, yeah. up with two parents who are both musicians who had there were a lot of instruments around right they were they had a music collection i mean this was yeah, a, organ a, and they we're were both, organ and as a footnote was that lose you Oh, no, no, no. sorry. No, I, I just all of a sudden got distracted because we're walking somewhere now. I'm so sorry. I know it's so rude. No, I'm, don't I a, worry. I, I I'm a, finding this great. This is great. I'm taking a tour. I have a cold. So if I don't get a drink, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. Oh, right. No, well, I have no, COVID, my so I, I beat you there. <laughs> yeah, you win this round man, big time. <laughs> right. So sorry about that. Has it been, no, has it's, it been bad? It's all right. It's, it was bound. I, it was inevitable. Yeah, I guess. Right. Um. Yeah, and I've been, you know, I've done all the precautions, so I'm, I'm probably yeah. getting a very, very, I'm one of those people who probably have a very, you know, moderate okay. experience. Yeah. Uh, well, here's another, okay, so your parents, and they were both, it turns out, were both uh, blind, right? That's what they told me. Oh, wait but a now, minute. Now I'm starting to think, and they were playing just a really long prank on me, and they're like, no, they're totally blind. That's so blind. great a joke. <laughs> That's pretty good though, right? I like it was doing, good. I, I like to test the water with my friends about how many, like, can I say blind jokes? <laughs> like, I'm not blind. It's like, I mean, like my wife, uh, my wife is black and I have two biracial children. Like, does that give me some leeway? I don't think it does. <laughs> oh, it's you know? a different, yeah. For some reason, <laughs> that asked, people, that's asked a my different. Wife that and she, she was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> By the way, we share that in common too. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm no longer married to her. I'm a, uh -huh. I'm not married. I'm you know I have a very important person <clears throat> in my life. But uh, yeah, I was yeah. I was yes I was and she was from Nashville originally. I mean I met her in 
in Brooklyn. And she is the one that introduced me to you. Is that right? Yeah. She, I, I, I mean, I, it's, it's, there was a photographer f- friend who, you know, that, that you have this friend in common with my ex wife mm-hmm. So, oh, right. Uh, anyway, long story. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, she, no she came home and she goes, this, you, you, you would like this guy. <laughs> <clears throat> That's the thing. She wasn't like, I like this. I want you to hear it. It was no, like, no, she you liked would it. like this guy. No, she liked it. She would, no, no, she would not have brought it back if she didn't think, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Uh, but no, uh, it, even though you're joking, uh, I, no, she would not have even gone that far if she didn't, you know, first has to pass her own. Because she has this yeah, soulful, yeah. she yeah. likes this soulful thing too. So, um, you know. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, and then one other thing I cool. wrote a note, what's that? No, that's so, cool. I like hearing, yeah, so I like hearing have, those stories, those little kismet, you know. Yeah. And we have the aspire, you know, and my son, I, I, so, I mean, I think it's, I think it's the, I don't know if it makes it harder than anybody, if it's harder or easier. I guess it's also matters where you, maybe where you live, it could be something. But as every year goes by, even though there's a, obviously a certain percentage of the population that have problems with, with sure. that, I don't sure. know. But, but even, I don't know. It just seems like every year that goes by, there's more cases and more cases and more cases of people in inter interracial relationships and yeah. I mean, well, I mean it's, it seems like the Supreme Court's going to make that illegal too somehow. But I, mean, I don't know. I'll Clarence Thomas is. Well, I, uh, I don't know. I hate to say his name even, but Clarence Thomas is married to. A, yeah. albeit a horrible horrible person i'm much rather seen with a much nice i love right. i love black, i love uh, you know i have a love for not black women in terms of relationships i'm saying i just love uh there's something about a black I, I shouldn't talk about this it's it'll be misinterpreted somehow so but I, they're especially yeah, the soundbite, like man. my mother-in-law's my ex-mother-in-law today i contacted my ex-wife because her mother it was it would have been her mother's birthday today uh, okay. And I contacted, yeah. I texted her. I said, you know, I still miss her because, you know, she was just a, one of these terrific ladies. She was a teacher. She was beautiful. Her uh, name was Willie Ray Pittman yeah. and, um, you know, from Mississippi and, um, yeah. you know, great person. So I just have a, I just have a thing about that. Uh, I love <laughs> o- older black women and, uh, you know, and just the, it's like, they're just very, I, I, anything I say will be considered a generalization and, and silly. So I no, you already that. did the sound. You already did the sound bite for the episode. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just, is. I just love older black women. You said that, <laughs> so that's the sound yeah. bite right there. That's the one. <laughs> that's it. That's the one. That's not uh, a bad sound bite, really. You know, no, that's a good no. one, right? Right. You know, it's not bad. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I, I think you're totally. I think you're totally right. I mean, where I live, um. I mean, it's, 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 it's real Trumpy. It's real Trumpy, you know, and there's some really good folks in town. And look, there's some good folks that are Trumpy. They're just, in my opinion, they're pretty misguided that now I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. But, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Right. So, but like, <clears throat> no, I don't feel, well, I should ask Sam. I mean, how does Sam feel living in a town like this? You know, I think that's she's your oh, definitely, that's your, that's oh, your... oh, that's my wife. That's that's the wife. Sam is your wife now. Yeah. yeah, because that's the thing I was going to say, like Jacob is my son, Jake and his mom, his mom is splits her time between LA and, and, and Brooklyn because she's an okay. actor. An actor. Mm-hmm. She's does TV and, and wait, so, so they're in Brooklyn. So it, it's very important. Like I can't think of raising my son. I'm now at the age. He's just graduated high school. So I, I could, I moved right. up here. My goal was always to wait till he was old enough, you know, where yeah, like there's, yeah. there are some, there are black people around or people of color in general around, but not, not like New York city, or, you know, yeah, so that's, or even Nashville, obviously. Yeah. Right. That's one of our, that's one of our issues. Mm. And it's, and uh, now it's at, it's at the place where we actually, when I was married to my second wife, she's the one that I adopted the two girls with. Um, uh, we moved down to Nashville. One of the reasons being we had wanted since the beginning for the kids to be around more diversity. Mm-hmm. And they just weren't, the, the kids, they weren't happy there at all. Nice. <clears throat> they missed their, they missed their friends. They missed their family. And 
so you know it's one of those things um this is the second yeah, your second one this is the that mother was, of the that daughter, was second. Your daughters of your that's da- correct of the, right so are they there yeah. nearby where you are now yeah well i i'm doing the thing that you that you said i said i'm i'm gonna live near them until until they graduate high school so we actually have 50 50 custody great um <clears throat> so yeah like next uh next monday uh they'll uh, my ex will drop them off and they'll be with me for yeah. a week and okay cool. you know that's, that's wonderful that you can kind of work all that out of course but but i was gonna say it no is. no but it but it makes sense it's like um you know and they and are they, what's what age roughly are they are they the girls eight eight and ten and then okay. my my son who i i have with uh with sam uh he's almost a year old wow so it's it's a madhouse around here i'm gonna be <laughs> that dad it's it's such a dumb joke but the one where his friends my son's friends will be like that's really cool that your grandfather came to your graduation and <clears throat> he'll be like no that's my dad because i'll be really old <laughs> it's i didn't say it was a good joke i thought it was kind of a dumb i know joke. but i sort of used that. to have that feeling too when i became a dad at yeah. 40 you know but yeah exactly right just right. is. that's but that's i feel yeah it's it's it doesn't matter no there's it doesn't matter too. yeah yeah and so what grandparents are cool so you hang out with <laughs> i don't know right but, <laughs> especially with the grandparents of color the grandmothers of color they're my yeah for sure my, yeah man you're doubling down uh, on that right i around the time uh, okay so i went to the traverse city film festival Right before this was the last festival I attended in person before the pandemic. Or pandemic, yeah. And uh, I was introduced to Jim and Sam. Love it, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I saw, you know, their documentary. I had them on. They did the podcast from the Traverse City, which is Michael Moore's, you know, film festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they did it there. They showed it, and then they they performed at the right after their screening. And then I approached them, and they did the podcast. And did a song on the podcast. It was really, it was neat. Um, and then I know they had a, their first kid like last year. Yeah. And uh, I contacted them about doing the show again and they came back. <laughs> Just, it was so nice to see them. You know, they're such sweet people. So they're, but, uh, and they're, they're legit. Like they're some of the best people I've ever met. <clears throat> and they're this weird mix, mix of like talent ambition compassion humor like it's really straight like they're hungry right and and they're talented they're really talented they're incredibly talented yeah they, but, they but, could be you know like 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 everly brothers i mean not necessarily i mean look the everly brothers were the everly brothers i have no right to compare anybody to the everly brothers right no, but what i'm I saying is saying. in terms of Blending your voices and of connecting vocally. Yep. I have not. I haven't. I don't know if they know how good they are. I mean, I, I, um, not seen it like that. And I've seen a lot of great couples or, or duo, duo yeah. singing and yeah. doing incredible jobs. But they have this particular, uh, remarkable ability. It's uncanny. Yeah. It's it's uncanny, and I like that neither of their voices are uh normal right it's sort of true they are very uh, uh, upbeat right they're very like they're both different than what you think they would they would be um but they really like uh they were really good friends i toured with them a couple times and, and they were like i was going through a really really bad life patch there right and i just remember i remember one time specifically where I mean, really bad. And I was, <laughs> sorry. we were on the ele- elevator checking into the hotel. And I, I just like, as the door opened and they were going to get off on their floor, I like started just exploding, crying, like just sobbing yeah. like a baby. And so Jim said to his wife, he said, you, you just go to the room. I gotta, you know, and so he came up to the room with me and just like sat with me for a little bit until I was calmed down like he was tired yeah you know what i mean like he we'd been on tour for a couple of weeks i'm sure by that point and 
he just was probably 2 a.m. We probably had to get up at six. And, you know, he hadn't really probably gotten to actually hang out with his wife in private all day. But he came up to the goddamn room with me. So it's, it's shit like that where that was, I don't know. When I see that in a human, I'm like, okay, that's, yeah, that's a good person. He really did. I mean, maybe there was something to gain there. He's like, oh, it'd be nice to the headliner or anything. But I don't think he would have given a shit if it was oh me my or God. if it was like a homeless guy, you know? So yeah. they, they, yeah. they genuinely are that really rare. Man, because a lot of talented people are dicks, you know? And, and there's really wonderful people that are really not that talented. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> everybody's good at something i guess people say that i don't know i'm not sure i've seen like i got three kids you know one of them's you know got some talent the other two i'm like eh. <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm not really kidding no people those baby is really kids. talented at, at uh filling its diaper he poops his pants so well but that's yeah. about it no i love my kids they're they're amazing but i but i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna stick by my point which is that I, I think it's rare to see someone who is actually a, a loving, empathic person who is also monumentally talented. I just really do think that's rare. And that it doesn't have to be a thing. Like, who cares? Like, if, if it turns out James Taylor is just really mean, like, I'm still going to like James Taylor. I might like him a little less. You but... may not cover his song. Yeah. Oh, I probably. Well. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. Well, it depends what came out. Depends what came out. You know. Depends how dark it is. <clears throat> but anyways. So but if you were to, if I were to, to cover a James Taylor song, I'm just now that you brought him up, I'm just wondering. I don't what, know. I mean, it's beside the till, point, isn't it? Maybe wait yeah. till volume two, Adam, because maybe that's already in <laughs> progress, my friend. Oh. No, I. I. Oh, I had to cover James Taylor. Huh. That wasn't even a oh wow he was that was my mom and i that's the same as john same reason as john john van denver that's it. that's day that's... one for me as a as a not even an artist like as a human earliest memories are like listening huh. to listening to records um my mom listen i wasn't listening to him i was like four but you know just like sitting on the living room or the, or the um but hallway they, floor that they but they penetrate, right? They that's maybe. I mean, it's beside the point. You're, you're, no, it's, yeah, that that's yeah. They the they it strong enough that it made early memories for me. Okay. And I yeah. remember I, this is the the story I tell about the John Denver one is I can still see and 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 feel the double. It was a double LP. Right. <clears throat> it was so a the live record. album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can still see it sitting on um that old uh record cabinet that my dad actually still has um it's that visceral of a of a memory you know <clears throat> so yeah there are some songs that they i don't get it's like brown eyed girl i never need to hear brown eyed girl again for as long as i live van well, morrison what, is they, the number one example of when i talk about a song because uh, yeah. i was a guitar counselor for years at, in the summer okay. camp in yep. vermont and that was it's a favorite like for some i put reason, my foot in my mouth yeah well no, everybody loves that song. not my favorite it's oh, I'm, I'm saying i played it a million times uh, you know so and at every reunion and every time we i see all these wonderful people and we get together play by yeah. Night girl and i'm like if i never play it again it'll be too soon that, that's that's what i'm saying it's or, it was one you know, too many times take, or yeah. take it easy is another <laughs> or you know there's a handful of songs and yeah yeah so i wouldn't cover those but go ahead yeah. your thing. but uh, no I, th there's a few songs that i swear i don't think i could get sick of it <clears throat> I, I see what you mean i kind of have that relationship yeah. with some song uh but i found that it's so glad you brought that up to begin with um because i felt that any song which is the john denver song we're talking about mm -hmm. was in a way the most radical song on the album really yeah because it's just like you look through the song selection and they're pretty uh well i know a lot of them i mean with taylor swift aside because that's sure, kind of sure. kind of a almost you know it's like a surprise william Pitson's cover taylor Swift, whatever but but yeah, yeah like yeah. but in a way 
John Denver is like, you know, you know, it's like, like some people could, I, I, cause I, this another guy is another song. Everything. Uh, what am I saying? Um, uh, let jet plane, leave you on a jet plane. Yet another song. Yeah, yeah. I just can't. Yep. I mean, it, and then you, once in a while I'll sing, I'm like, Oh, it's kind of nice. It pushes your voice a little. I like, you know, it's, yeah. there's something about it and nostalgia, but any song interesting. When I did, did my, you ever hear? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Did, no, no. Quick, about that, did you ever uh, watch the uh, live version of <clears throat> of um, John and um, Mama Cass sing it? No. Oh my God! You got just make yourself a note or something. Watch that on yeah. YouTube. It's I, I don't know if it was like Dick Cavett or something, but oh my God! I, I'm pretty sure that's what they sang. Mama Cass and John Denver singing together. Like that's great. I shat myself when I was like, and I think all I kept saying was, this is live. Like they, this is just live. There's no like editing of those, no tuning. There's no, <clears throat> sorry, I got distracted there, but the yeah. music no, from that era this. is, is so good. Music from the seventies, particularly in that vein to me. And of, it's just, it's nostalgia at this point. Right. So my kids are going to say music from the 2020s, the early part, <laughs> you know like the darker but they're gonna say the same shit that i am right now but i'll be right it was so good it it was so good there was bad stuff too right. but the good stuff was like oh my god yeah Joni I mean, and james taylor judy collins joan Baez, they were all doing it at the same time you know I mean, yeah, but of course they were there first, you know, the singer song, those first generation of singer songwriters did have that advantage that, that they, you know, that, that they kind of were around there first, you know? Yeah, and, that's uh, true. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but I, I don't even know why I would look for an excuse to sort of try to, to, <laughs> you know, make it seem like they were less in, in any way less significant and then you had production why was i know, defend that, it yeah why was i being defensive yeah, we, about it <laughs> i was like why do you hate john denver adam <laughs> i don't hate john denver but um no in fact i was saying i just felt like it was um because it's like such a right it's kind of because people think it's corny some cynical people oh my god absolutely it's totally john cheesy. denver but he's the but, he's the cheesiest, you know. But you know, and then he, you know, he was an interesting guy. I'm sure. There, I don't know if there's been a book written about him because he sort of, you know, he uh, of course was a movie actor as well. It turns mm -hmm. out, and he he was so so huge in the '70s that he starred with George Burns and in <clears throat> in a, you know, they had a, oh God, one and two, and or oh God and oh God two, I guess, and. Uh, and then I'm sure he did a bunch of other movies. And then, oh, the story I just want to, re I relate to Annie's song. It's different because, did you, you know what pre cana is? Mm -mm. pre cana is what the church, the Catholic church requires people to do before young people, young couples to do. It's like a retreat. And they okay. go on, they go on a retreat with other young couples about, who are in the th process of about to get married. And they do a weekend and they, it's run by the church. And they, you know, I did, the reason I did it is because my the same woman I mentioned before who I married was was Catholic and she wanted mm -hmm. to have the church. Um, she wanted it, but it's a long story. I can't get into it. But one day I'll tell you with how we got a church, a rabbi and a priest to co-officiate. Oh, I love but it. It's, so it's almost impossible because I know it's like a setup for a joke, right? So I'm waiting, uh, you, for, you, I'm you, waiting two, for the third the third <laughs> member of the bar. Yeah, yeah. and but. You'd go on this week. So we went on this weekend. It was the uh, they, it was a young uh, middle aged couple who were mm -hmm. religious, somewhat religious. Obviously, they were part of the church, and they were kind of facilitating this weekend. And they give you all these exercises. So you go and you write stuff, and then you come back and you share it with the group. Right. And it's all about relationships, and relationships, and and challenges in a in a relationship. So you're prepared when you're going into this new phase of your life with your new. Mm -hmm partner so that's what pre is for and then at the end it, it the church would allow you for instance if you signed off on that you'll have your child brought up in the you know christian right you'll you get married by, by <coughs> a, 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 a witch in the middle of uh of, of of a of a fire circle or whatever it won't matter they don't care but if you agree 
to bring, to sign off uh, with the church and you'll raise your child in the church. Yeah. They don't care where you get married, who marries you, who co-officiates. It's you've no done kidding. everything you need to do. And pre can is part of that process. So I did this with my ex-wife. The whole reason I'm bringing this long-winded story up is because on this retreat, which was in Garrison, New York, but not too far from where I am. It's like in the Hudson Valley, north of Westchester, right across the river, what the Hudson from uh, West Point. Okay. And so just to give you some ge geography of it. Yeah, but, yeah. So we go in this old priest is the, you know, the, the, the lovely man. I can't remember his name, Father Gallagher, or something like that. And he is like 85, 90 years old. Right. And he gets in front the first night because he's kind of not running things. He's there to do the prayer and that kind of thing. And he's a lovely guy. And he gets up in front of us on the first night in the dining room. And he says, uh, and he gives a speech and he says, at the end, now I'd like just to read a few lyrics off a song, which I mean, meant, means a lot to you. And he thought it was like young and young kids. They probably love John Denver. So he takes out the lyrics to any song. And he starts to read Annie song lyrics. And, and here's why I brought it up because during this, he's holding the paper and as he's holding it and reading his bridge falls out of his mouth. His teeth fall out this. And so, and people like other couples and young folks there thought it was a, uh, it was a practical joke or something, but I knew like, I knew it seems it like a bit. It seems like a bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a weird, it'd be it's a weird like, bit. He does this. He's nuts. Father Gallo, he's, he's just, yeah. he likes oh, the... he's, he's doing the teeth thing again. <laughs> oh, here's the teeth. teeth you should fall see out. what, you should see what falls out when he does fire and rain. <laughs> I, see, I shouldn't do that. That's his, you just, you just created a solid two minutes for Father Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> you got a solid two. Teeth I don't know if he's still you, around yeah. though, because he was really, he was kind of on the getting up there. Yeah, but well, that's a, that's my association with Annie's song. That's fantastic. Uh, it's but maybe it is, turn it around now. It's one of the most beautiful songs <clears throat> ever written. I would say it's I'd say it's the the third best love song ever written. Third best. Yeah. Uh, okay, two, so love will tear us apart. Is that a love song? No, no, that's no, that's, that's that's the saddest song ever. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, what are the other two though? Well, uh, God only knows would be the second greatest oh, love song that's ever. It. Okay, that is. <clears throat> and then "Couldn't Love You More" by John Martin is number one. Couldn't love you more. By yeah, John. Love, I don't know that. Love John Martin. Okay. Big fan. Dude was crazy, but big fan. Is uh, what what years are we talking about? Um, Martin was a contemporary of like Nick Drake. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> his biggest song, "Solid Air," he actually wrote about about Nick. Uh, so he was um, he would have been when did when did he start? Late, very late sixties and throughout the seventies. He continued okay. into the eighties, <clears throat> uh, but obviously that kind of stuff was falling out of favor. People right. didn't want you know acoustic Ernest. guitars and that oh Ernest love songs or, and guitars. yeah well yeah or sincerity right <clears throat> you can't be sincere anymore man with writing that's that's really a bummer your lyrics have to be weird and I you have to not be able to understand what someone's talking about you can't just say <laughs> you you fill up my senses like a night in the forest like that's poetic it's gorgeous but it's sincere right. yeah and people find sincerity icky now yeah, well, I hate I that. Know, I, I hate that. Yeah, well, then, you, well, you haven't adjusted your or your changed yourself to. Oh, fit I, I, I. Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to. No. I mean, I remember a, a music supervisor told me. <clears throat> he said, "We're looking for a song. It's like that. We're trying to see if you have something like this, but it can't say love in it." <clears throat> and I was like, yeah. "I." I was like, I don't think I have, because any love song I'm sure that I wrote, I'm sure I said love in it because I was talking about love. Now, of course, the metaphor is a thing, William. You ever heard of that? Like, no, I get it. I understand you can you can talk about something 
and use other words. <clears throat> but the, just the idea that they're like, but we don't want to hear this word. I was like, well, that doesn't make, what if it's the best song ever? You know, like, and it's, I don't know. Yeah. But you have to be clever. You just have to like cleverness uh, become Trumps. more important. It trumps. Yeah. yeah. Cleverness right. trumps sincerity now. And excuse me, that to me is a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. That's a massive mistake. Cleverness is cool. Right. But if there's no, you know, heart in it, then I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit to me. Yeah. Anyway, I, so the um, Joy Division song, you know, I wouldn't say there's uh, there's cleverness. No. And that at all. It's devoid of cleverness. But man, is it heartbreaking. You know, yeah. it's sincere. Mm -hmm. He's saying, like, love is going to tear the two of us apart, man. Like, shit got, it got too routine. When we lie in bed, there's nothing there anymore. Like, he's not being clever. <laughs> it's yeah, just that's, that's hard to, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Anyways. So that's the stuff I gravitate. That's, it's a great towards. version. It's a great version. Thanks, my and my manager said he thought it was like happy. He was like, he was like, this is a this is the first time you've ever played a song by someone else, and it was happier than the version that they did. <laughs> that's funny. I was like, that's weird because it still sounds pretty sad to me. But he's probably yeah, right. But but there's shades of sad. But he chose to <laughs> say it was happier. What a proper yeah. way of putting it was it's a little less sad than the original. <laughs> that would have been more accurate, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Salisbury Hill. I, I think that was uh, brave in a way because, you know, the Peter Gabriel, who, you know, you know, yeah. it's his song and it's so iconic. And but you and it's such a different route you went. Yeah, that was another one, too, that was like, I, I have to at least try just because the that was one of those like the first time i heard that on it would have been the radio right i was like <laughs> that's the that's the coolest melody I've, and i had I no idea what he was singing about <clears throat> either it wasn't until i got older that you know uh about like leaving genesis and you know striking out on his own and how everyone would look at him and how he was looking at himself by doing that and you know but that you you well, it's, recognize it's, it instantly it's a case where you know the lyrics uh, can affect you even if you don't know what they're about like in other words mm. music can the melodies can do that music can do that because you can build it and it's an emotional experience i mean the, that guy uh mozart did it pretty well or in the, you know, like that. but you know people like that but no like peter gabriel is like mozart i mean he, you know he writes these incredible yes yeah. like melodies i mean He's in a great company, but um, and yet even those lyrics are, he writes lyrics sometimes that have a power, even if you don't know what they're about. They may not always be right. linear storytelling, but like in Salisbury Hill, right. for instance, there's something about that. Go, get your things. I've come to take you home, you Oof. know, which is just like chills, you know. Oh my God! I just got them when you said that. I yeah. literally have goosebumps right now that you that you said that. Yeah, it's that, yeah. and it's an eagle. And it's an eagle that came to tell him, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm like, this is, he's talking to a goddamn eagle. He's like, grab your stuff, son. Time to come home. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is this talking about? You know? Yeah, but Mercy Street. Um, or In Your Eyes. Another yeah. couple, you know, um, those are off, both off so, I think. You don't yes. need the words. You don't need the words to like that. When that do, 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 that that beat in Mercy Street. Yeah, like it just. Oh my God! Like what's happening? You start to feel something. So I just just piggybacking off your point, you know. Um, yeah. But that song took on new meaning to me when I I did start to understand a little bit what he was, what he was talking about. Yeah, that one was a little bit. There's some people that are scary to cover. Gabriel's one of them. The Beatles are scary. <laughs> right. Elliot Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith is scary to cover. You know, there's a couple. Why, why Elliot Smith? Because he's one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. Because he's deceased. Right. So it's somehow it's it seems shittier if you fuck it up. Mm -hmm. Somehow. I don't know why. 
but I'm just being honest about how I, I feel like I would be more upset if I fucked it up Mm -hmm. because he's not around. I don't know why. Um, Yeah. I think it would ruin some, and it would ruin something about whichever song I chose. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know. I'm trying to think of, go ahead. I was wondering if you ever got to see him a lot. Him what uh, live? Oh man, I got an awful story about that. It's just, I Uh-oh. my friend my friend had tickets. I were I was working at um I was a mental health technician. This was after college, but before grad right. school. I worked for five years in South Jersey. Oh, oh, excuse me, beautiful South Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. It. Yeah, uh, actually, not, but not in uh uh where not not. I worked in, uh, I worked in Camden. I worked in Camden. Oh, right. I worked well, at that Co- is tough. the mean streets. It uh, wasn't fun. I worked at uh, Cooper Hospital, um, which is right across the river from, from Philly, of course. Yeah. Yep. And wow, Camden is, was really, really scary. But I lived in Delran. So I lived like, you know, 25 minutes north of there. But anyways, <clears throat> uh, my friend and I, the, he, we became buddies because we were both techs, you know, so I would work morning. And then he would come in and we would, you know, I'd give him report and we would shoot the shit for a little bit before he started. And uh, yeah, we would talk about music because we were both into the same stuff. And he was like, dude, he came in and he was like, I got tickets. Um, I think he called me even or something, but he told me he had tickets for Elliot Smith. And I had been offered to work a double. Um, And I was like, oh shit, man. I should probably go, but you know, I can get the extra money and get some overtime. And it was that, that thought that you literally, I, I don't know if I actually thought it literally, but it felt in hindsight, like it did. I'll just see him next time. Mm. You know, it was one of those like things. And I think that was his last tour. I think that's the last one that he actually was able to, able to do. So long story short, but maybe it's better that way. Cause my understanding was, those last years were kind of hit or miss mm-hmm. on on touring that he could be pretty messed up at the shows sometimes mm. um did you ever get to see him i did once did. i did yeah was it good it was a good show it was yeah. i gotta I, okay. yeah i don't remember too much but i remember i would have remembered if it was it right right <clears throat> so yeah. that one that one kind of hurt but um anyways yeah he's he's one that i think i thought about covering and i haven't abandoned it completely but i uh yeah well yeah i would probably cover the beatles before i would cover elliot smith um i just want to mention a few more of these songs that you chose because yeah. i we mentioned taylor Swift, the the one you chose and i know mm-hmm. you've been listening to like you don't discriminate between and among genres do you there's no it's the record well, companies that made genres you know, i mean uh, anyway right. right so you yeah a song well a i mean song. i used to i used to for sure i used to modern pop music is shit the beach boys are real pop music i used to say like all that stuff but then i had kids and then my kids like taylor swift and when when we listened to it together they would want to dance and so we would dance and have fun so then i was like i'm an idiot like taylor swift is awesome she's she's giving me dance parties with my kids right so why yeah. and some of her music is is cool as hell you know i don't think she's writing any of it but that's fine i mean whitney houston wasn't writing her stuff either who cares right so yeah and, and she... i really did i love those last two taylor swift records i thought they were incredible so I actually recorded several covers from those. I don't know how many will ever see the light of day, but, but they're for your kids, I love those right? records. Well, they, they didn't love those records because they're too like, you know, they're national records, right? Aaron Dresner did them. He produced them. So it's like Taylor Swift does the national kind of, that's, that's one of the reasons why I like them so much. Right. No, no, yeah. I got you. Right. I love that kind yeah. of, um, uh, yeah, what's the um, Mandy Moore? Um, yeah, she worked with Mike Viola. Do you know Mike Viola? I know the name. He's a he he's he's a, like a a really super another super talent, real super talented singer songwriter, 
and he's also produced some stuff and mm -hmm. you know he writes he's written some songs for the movies and stuff but he's a super talented guy and a lovely guy and he um he produced one of our recent albums and it was just such no a, way yeah and it so it was it was really she really was, really was stretching you know and and it was yeah great. yeah yeah it came out really well it was a great album no i love that and that well that's the thing i liked about that i thought this was taylor making the kind of music that she probably listens to you know i think yeah. I, I think when she listens to music she was probably listening to bon ivor and the national and sufjan sufjan you know right. like i think that's what she was doing i don't think huh. she's listening to dua lipa and lizzo maybe she does sometimes i don't fucking know but maybe right. she's a normal person and she listens to a bunch of different stuff exactly <clears throat> you know but yeah. i just i just respect i did respect there's I nothing more exciting than seeing art something seeing somebody young who you know is is all you know evolving and and listening mm -hmm. you know they're taking like just let it, allowing all sorts of things become influences or whatever you know it's it's you yeah. see it sometimes with certain artists that are first very handled right because they got in right under the grips of a some record label which she did yeah i mean you know yeah. it's not the only one um often people like mandy Moore. yep or Taylor Swift, you know, you know, the beautiful young women with huge voices, right? So yeah, divas, yeah, yeah. You know, I we had 20 albums out of that person before we let's milk it, man. Let's exactly. milk it. There's millions um, of dollars. But then they there. turn out to yeah. be super talented and intelligent and cure, you know, I mean, they're gonna yeah, of course they're gonna grow, uh, grow up and it's so. her, it's her, it's her work ethic though that gets me, man. The Taylor Swift, that's the thing. Right. <clears throat> Is that, listen, I, again, I'll stress this point. I do not believe for a second she is intimately involved in writing her songs. But who cares? I, th I bet she works harder in a week than I've worked the entire last year. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I respect about her. And she is an, she's an entertainer, man. She's entertaining more people in one day than I'll entertain my whole life. That's beautiful. You well, know? It's a great... It's a great... Um you know uh see this is what the problem with having covid <laughs> you lose <laughs> i've lost 50 percent of my vocabulary right, in the last right. few days but right. uh, you know i i mean uh, a, a great mind frame i don't know great perspective i guess is the word yeah, yeah you yeah, mentioned yeah. sufjan stevens before you cover sure. one of his songs it, it turns out it's called I feudal device have, have you performed with that guy <clears throat> on record Oh, you have? But we've, we've, we've still never met. Yeah, we're oh. on like a couple different songs together on different people's albums. Nice. Which I thought was funny. Um, we, share, we share some friends. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but we've never actually uh, never met. But I love, mm -hmm. I love Sufjan very, very, very much. Uh -huh. And I think he's, um, I think his legacy will be very important for a while i hope That's it will great. it should be yeah yeah there's nobody like him man there's nobody like him um iron and wine of course <clears throat> yeah yeah that's not that's uh, that's why i just i think that's a that's a perfect song it's beautiful it's perfect song. It's video video is great too you ever see the video because he was like a film teacher i think right it's, it's yeah that's quite a quite a remarkable visually speaking it's cool, like the 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 picnic table. Mm -hmm. It pans, everything's there, and then it, it everything is rotten and decaying, and everything on the way back. And it's I don't know, it's this weird. He did like the Freud thing for me, the the Thanatos and the libido, where it's like the two instincts, the death and the life. Uh -huh. You know, and that song is like it's this beautiful love song, but he's talking about one partner burying the other partner in the backyard. <laughs> <clears throat> like that is life and death. Right. just smashing into each other you know mm. and he makes this this beautiful simple drop d finger picking song it's perfect perfect song um your song which another kind of i think it's a bit risky to take on such a, a cover but you know i killed it i killed it though adam you did <laughs> that one i fucking nailed no that and and here's the cool thing that's the thing that started the whole project 
because Valentine's Day 2020, I want to say, no, or maybe 19, doesn't matter. Um, my girlfriend, now wife, not like a big flowers, right. you know, jewelry kind of like conventional romantic right. kind of like assembles. Right. With it. She'd rather you not get her anything than get her like the box of chocolates and the roses right she'd be more offended if you got her that <clears throat> so i was like i like oh, shit her. i got i got to, yeah yeah exactly well because she, it's to, something require thought yeah it's not original yeah yeah right so it's not you're you're doing it for everyone else you're not do or for yourself you're not doing it for me you know you're not thinking right. about me so i was like sh i gotta do something though because early on we ain't married yet so when I can just stop doing stuff. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm a singer. You know, I know that she really likes this song. So I recorded uh, that version of it. It didn't have the Ali Moss, the vocals, the female vocals weren't there. Uh, but um, I recorded, I sent it to her and she called me and she was listening to it like on her way to the gym and she was crying. You know, like it was, it meant a lot to her. Yeah. It was a, it was a beautiful gift. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, a year later, whenever I decided to start this project, I asked her because I, if she would have said no, I never would have released that. But I asked her, I was like, are you open to that gift being a part of this, you know, this right. project? But anyways, but that, that sort of, it got me back into that mode. I've done covers for my whole career like the first show i played i'm sure i played king of wishful thinking mm -hmm. by go west Nick. from the oh let's go west pretty pretty woman the from the pretty woman soundtrack uh -huh. you know i love that song again perfect pop song but i think covers are just fun man you know because we all know them right, right. <laughs> yes no well, not the ones sometimes I've sometimes <laughs> people intentionally put the most obscure you know deep cut they can come up with because you know they're trying to be hip or cool but it's not that again yeah. it goes to the point so, like being you know intentional and sympath and 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 uh earnest um there's nothing wrong with it it's uh yeah you know well you got there's a game that... there's a game you're playing with mm -hmm. that you know like the, like the taylor swift that like so when i did the the kanye and the katie perry cover the fuck was that that was a record label like that was a record label saying okay like <clears throat> we're you know they did the whole like acoustic you're a white acoustic singer songwriter let's have you do some pop and some hip-hop and everybody will love it they'll get really excited about it because like oh my god it's so different right you know like fuck off <laughs> it's so dumb it's the dumbest shit uh -huh. And I mean no disrespect to that. I don't work with them anymore. And I mean no disrespect, but that's just bullshit. And people see through that stuff, you know, or they don't. I don't know. But I don't. It, it is a game that you play with with the covers thing and with your your own music too. That you're trying to pretend like money doesn't matter, mm -hmm. or that popularity doesn't matter. But of course it does you know like there's there's forethought involved in the thinking of some of those songs about familiarity you know hopefully not at the expense of art but i don't know i can't tell you the percentages i think if you look at the full list you'd probably say well no this doesn't look like a money grab <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but but uh yeah i don't know I mean, there's, well, I, if, I'm, if, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, well, I was going to say, if some people are put off, but like I made that joke at shows when I would play like the Joy Division song, these last um, couple tours I did, where I was like, I was like, yeah, put on a covers record because I need money, you know, and like that was a joke, but also not a joke because this is my job, you know, and I found the last several years very uninspiring artistically mm, right you know just sitting in a goddamn house trying to not 
die you know like that wasn't yeah <laughs> like wasn't yeah. a lot wasn't a lot to write about and then there's this though so maybe this will also yeah yeah oh no and i'm not i don't think i'm devoid of inspiration it's just i didn't even want to try oh, i see you know and the covers right. thing just felt it maybe the actually timing was felt, right yeah that's right exactly yeah it felt good it felt authentic um that's the thing that was was cool about it and i think that comes through you know i think there's like you can hear i hope so i think you can hear some investment in the you know in the performances totally i think it's a beautiful album thanks, thanks. and it starts <laughs> off with the, the, the with the with that taylor swift the one it's a great start to the album it's a well it's a nice start to the album yeah i don't know if it sets it up like here's what the rest of the album is but it's like it feels good to start with yeah. you know yeah, yeah. had you um, did you know um the long winters no and Bef i was listening before? to the original too because i was trying to also Oof. not only hear your vo version but also to hear how you depart and how you different you are from the song choices or yeah what, yeah or try to find what the the thing in the song that you might mm -hmm. be um you know especially affected or attracted by that would go into your choice you know like so yeah. listening to the original was kind of important for me to get a a taste totally. of like the other original you know not just hearing your version like some of the I songs mean, i wasn't familiar with that i wasn't familiar with um sarah siskind yeah yeah although yeah, i, I think I've, i may have heard her be, uh now that i'm working at this radio station they may have played her yeah she's but, incredible. and i know Bri, Br phoebe bridges i've listened to some of her stuff too or, i mean sure. you know but i didn't know that first record before. yeah her right. first record was great yeah uh-oh <laughs> got it understood <laughs> no but you know why i did that song <clears throat> i did that song for one reason this is the thing about this covers record, man. There's different reasons for each of these songs being, I being on there, Adam. And that was because the guy that uh, I got my it. former my former friend, yep, that that hooked up with my with my wife, my second wife while we were married. He while sent you were her. Recording. Yeah, yeah. While we were doing the record, yeah, he sent her a cover of that. That he did a cover and he oh. sent that to her. <clears throat> And I liked that song, and obviously it ruined that song for me. You had to take it back. That's it, you said it. That was yeah. it. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I did read in the press. The, there was this uh, what you called the album biography, which was an interesting way of uh, oh, that I got yeah, sent. Yeah, right. I did read you referenced some of these things, and I did mean to bring it up because this wasn't only. I think it'll be an interesting. You, you if you could do some shows where you can focus on the cover songs, I don't know how easy or difficult that is. Maybe when you if you're going out to support the album, I guess you will. Right. Uh, I don't know, or I don't know financially how that works. So I'm not sure. Like, well, you know, it's, honestly, I think it's more about the fans. It's it's would they, yeah, would they yeah, be they, okay? They want to hear your songs. Hearing. Yeah, I think I mean some want to hear both, but I think I think if I just did that, I think people would be a little a little bit right. i would no, love no, to, I, I would love that. to i would love to just do covers man that'd be amazing like, i mean just for a break and also to support the album and no i mean it would yep. but it would be great to be able to introduce each song with the anecdote oh, that, about yeah. this that's kind of what i was getting at because you know I mean, unless they're in the liner notes this. unless they're in the liner notes which is another way to do that i guess yeah but, but nobody's everybody, gonna read but nobody yeah and also who buys you <laughs> cds is this gonna be on physical product <laughs> I think actually they're doing vinyl. Oh, okay. The so labels, maybe it'll be labels on... liked this. They liked this project a lot. Right. They were they were on board. Nothing I've done in the last like five years, but this they were pretty psyched about. So oh. well, this I was psyched about that album. This <laughs> one. This one. See? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. This one. I can't I don't have enough hands. Pittsburgh. Those are the good Pittsburgh. ones. Oh, Lions! Yeah, Lions, man, Lions! It. Those are good. I would listen. I listen and even to this one. Those are the uh, remixes. And... Yeah, that's so good, right? I that's think like I told you when out. you were when we did that thing at backstage at uh, yeah Joe's. What? Wait, wait, where was it? No, Joe's it, pub. Or, yeah, yeah, no. no, no, not Joe's pub. I can't remember where we met. Now, City Winery. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it was winery. It had to be. I guess. Yeah, uh, anyway, the old, the, the, old point, we're, the old We're in one. a green room. Yeah. Yes. And we're in the green room, and 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 I said, I stole a bit of the song intro for. I don't have my glasses on, but. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. But one of the songs. Oh, I lost you. Oh wait, hang on. Yeah. There we go. Yep. I stole a piece of a uh, intro for my theme song for the first for this podcast. <laughs> I love said, that. <laughs> I did. I should have asked for permission, but it was oh, just okay. like less than thirty seconds. So, uh, and I'm pretty sure I I gave you credit here and there. So, uh, but but um, anyway. So there it well, is. That's always that's now. gonna be a that's gonna be a solid yes for me. Just don't ask the record label. <laughs> maybe I'll go back. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll go back. <clears> record label. They'll they'll tackle you and and rip the podcast from your hands. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I actually love my record labels. They're actually great right now. Oh, that's nice. Well, this was yeah. uh this is already a while ago, but I have and I have. So I'll look forward to uh, again. I'll send you um the address for the radio station. Just send me when this physical product comes out in the fall and then we'll we'll done i will post maybe i'll post like a a shorter version of this conversation now because it's nice to to do this while it's fresh and new and and you're in this phase where you are now and then in november when the when this comes out whether digitally or on and or on vinyl Mm -hmm. uh we can i release the full conversation with this big segment about your song choices i i love that that would be amazing man thank you you. yeah you're welcome of course uh i got it my girlfriend is waiting downstairs and she's so patient because uh, we're gonna have dinner and, and uh, oh that's so sweet man did she uh, cook or, or, or are you cooking oh actually in this case we both have covid so we, she has been cooking and um um oh, or making it preparing too. we haven't really been eating a lot but she oh no she gave it i'm pretty sure well i could have given it to her too but she got sick for, <laughs> She they were both quarantined together, which is like after she was away for a couple of weeks in Europe. Oh this wow! Is, this is the best. Like in a way, it's the best. I mean, we were yeah, we're you get time together. Yeah. You know. Do you have the smell? The smell thing though? Is it? No. Thank God. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm lucky. I I felt like crap yesterday. I wouldn't been able to do it. Yeah, this yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But and then well, um, today okay. I'm feeling pretty good. I mean. Yeah. Much better than yesterday, anyway. Yeah. Well, thank God, man. That's yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to mess. I haven't gotten it yet. Knock on wood. I'm trying to keep it that way. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. And my kids. Uh, well, at least one of my kids had it. Oh wow. While they're with me, how did I not get it? Like I was testing her. Oh, I yeah, did I the know. swab and everything, and I'm like right in her right. face. And I didn't get COVID, yeah. so I don't know. Uh, no. You're maybe you're <laughs> just you know. It's that Hungarian <laughs> Irish, yeah, Hungarian right. Irish stock that I have, Mojo or whatever. Yeah, just be yeah, yeah. grateful, and you know, if you do, you'll you'll you'll. I'm sure you've gotten vaccinated and also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be yeah. fine. It's, yeah. it's it's. I got. I have two boosters. I, I'm I'm okay. Um. Well, I can't wait to. I actually have to get that book because I want to get the Michael Pollan oh. book, in addition as well. Uh, are you through some of it yeah. so far? Yeah, and you're liking yeah. it. Yeah, what I'm gonna do? What? Just wait. I'll mail you this one. You don't even have to buy it. For real? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's amazing. I'll take you up on that. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Sure. It'll be all right. I don't want to keep your keep your lady waiting any longer. Thank you. Adam, it's all it's literally the best talking to you, man. This is awesome. I know. I, I, Every yeah, time, this is the best. That you're right. Uh, uh, yeah. On, uh, you know, it's not like squeezing in five minutes after a show or before a show which no this is this is it's good to talk to you man yeah same please come to the hudson valley like on your next <clears throat> you know or i'll come down to the city to see you but it would be great if you I play would love to come up there i came up there one time i think it was like a dinner show venue and it was three people that showed up well i'll bring so I four, at least this. four people i can guarantee you that <laughs> so i'm killing it i'm killing There's it lots of venues up here though there really are there are lots are of venues. really yeah okay. there are a lot of Right in the Hudson Valley, yeah, we have like in the Albany even. There's a couple, there's a few, and oh, really? uh, but that's further up. But then yeah, there's yeah. like Daryl's house. There's a um, oh, uh, yeah. Levon Helms studio, and right. the place, there's like a couple of other Woodstock, uh, Bearville, Bearsville, and then over here, there's the Falcon, and then and then um, 
Beacon, New York. There's uh, the uh, what's it called Town Crier. There's lots of really good venues. There's that many. Okay. Oh, more than that. I mean, and then you have the Agerman, Agermont Barn in uh, Agermont, like in the Berkshires. There's a few places that's pretty close to me, actually. Okay. Um, there's lots of venues where you could. Okay, yeah. We can get a group together, but you have to go through a booking agent, I assume. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, no, but I can drop that note to him. I can say, you know, hey, I'd love to go up there. Well, is there play, anything there, we can there, work there, out? There, there, there's a lot. There's a huge amount of people up here. There's a huge amount of music up here, and people yeah, yeah. Lo- love it. So, all right. Well, everybody, everybody loves depression. So, <laughs> there you go. I'm, so. I'm your guy. <laughs> all right, Adam. <laughs> um, so yeah, be in touch. Um, okay. With the, I'll make a note for the address, and then once I get. Um, I'm 99.9 percent sure they're doing a vinyl, so I'll get it out to you when I get it. Oh, okay, great. And then, yeah, uh, yeah, if, yeah, because we do actually can play vinyl at the studio at station, and then um, love it. Yeah, we'll trade. Um, but I have the digital version, so I can give them that. I can burn it on it. Also, oh no worries. Yeah, all oh, good. Okay. All right, brother. Enjoy dinner. All right, man. You too. Good to talk to you, man. Same here. All right. See you, Adam. Bye, bye.